You did it. Congratulations on your hard work and persistence over the past few years. Finally, your big day is here, and later this morning, you'll be walking over the stage towards a new beginning in your life. A heartfelt thank you to the family and friends celebrating with us today. Without your guidance, support, and love, and laughter, this day would not be as joyful. The graduation cords you are about to receive have two significant and important meanings. First, the light blue color represents the exceptional leadership and service you have individually demonstrated during your time at Boise State. The dark blue color signifies Boise State's shared values of fairness, respect, academic excellence, trustworthiness, responsibility, citizenship, and caring. Like the cord you will wear, all these values should be tied together and close to your heart. The values you represent today do not disappear as you move forward. Instead, these shared values should be embodied in your words and actions for the entirety of your life. Live them. Ground yourself in these standards and let them serve us as a reminder of your years at Boise State University. As you move forward to the next chapter, fortune does favor the bold. Nothing in life is worth having unless you take risks and surprise yourself with what you're capable of. Remember, the best is always yet to come. And again, congratulations on such a momentous occasion. Thank you for joining us today and happy graduation. Go Broncos. Hi everyone, my name is Cam Brown. I'm graduating with a degree in anthropology and minors in environmental studies and Native American and indigenous studies. I'm honored to share some of my thoughts about leadership with you today. In high school, I had an innumerable amount of leadership positions. I self-identified as a leader above all else. The more positions I filled, the more I felt accomplished. I didn't know what I wanted to do in college, but I knew I wanted to do something with leadership. When I first came to Boise State, I wanted everyone else to recognize me as a leader too. Before classes started, I joined the leadership and engagement living and learning community and signed up for a council position within my honors college house. I was ecstatic to establish myself as a leader so quickly. Despite living in a designated leadership community, and having multiple leadership roles in clubs during my first year, I didn't feel like I was a leader. It didn't seem like I was doing anything significant in these roles. I wasn't sure where I had gone wrong. The COVID-19 pandemic hit shortly after my second semester at Boise State and restricted many leadership opportunities for the remainder of my freshman and sophomore years. When I accepted a position as an orientation leader for the summer of 2021, I was invigorated to jump back into leadership. I was excited to be recognized campus-wide as a student leader, and I had expectations that incoming students would hold me in high regard because I had the term leader in my job position. I quickly found out that having an official leadership title equated to nothing. While faculty on campus praised us for being the best of the best, the incoming students we interacted with were less convinced. Despite all the assurances I received about positively influencing students at orientation, my first few meetings felt like a failure. I was doing everything asked of me, but the students were unimpressed and unengaged. I found myself going beyond what was expected of me in my leadership role. That summer, I put extra effort into engaging with students, listening to their needs, and figuring out the best ways to support them. I also spoke up to my team when I saw issues in the program. Making the extra effort in this role felt unrecognized. However, I felt fulfilled as I knew I was making a difference. It didn't take long after that to realize my initial philosophy that emphasized the importance of being recognized as a leader was downright stupid. My perspective has changed significantly over the past few years. While I once was so focused on, re on receiving recognition as a leader, I realized that I can do critical work without recognition. In fact, I believe the most important work in leadership are done from the bottom up. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of leading by example and from whatever position you hold even if it isn't a traditional leadership position. During my academic work and extracurricular experiences at Boise State, my most meaningful leadership experiences have been when I didn't actually hold a leadership position. Leadership means showing initiative, but also listening to and respecting others. I had to develop my listening skills throughout the past few years to figure out the best way to serve others. These listening skills have become critical to leadership in my chosen career field where I need to lead by example by listening to and amplifying diverse perspectives. Speaking up for justice and holding those around you accountable is essential to leadership. This became apparent to me while I attended the John Freemuth Student Congress at the Andrus Center this past October, where we learned about the issues of change in wildfire management policies. 
This Congress lacked diversity and critical perspectives central to the issues at hand. While I was just an attendant, I spoke up to the team of environmental professionals who had planned the Congress. I gave them feedback on the lack of diversity at the event and the importance of including the missing perspectives. Holding the planning committee accountable in this manner has greatly affected how they are planning the next Congress, and they've invited me to be a planning committee member and continue leading discussions about diversity and inclusivity. This felt like a pivotal moment in understanding how I can lead by example and without a position of power. I think perhaps the most important leadership quality I've developed during my time at Boise State is the ability to say no or ask for help. Leaders aren't superhumans. We must take care of ourselves before we can truly serve others. Asking for help or simply saying no to more responsibility is sometimes necessary. It's taking a lot of overcommitting for me to understand this lesson. There have been too many instances where I accepted more work than I could handle, and because I was so overwhelmed, I couldn't lead to the best of my ability. Overcommitting can take a toll on your mental health and well-being. While it is hard to set these, set these boundaries, I've learned that I cannot fill other people's cups if my own cup is empty. Leading without a leadership position can result in imposter syndrome. This is something I've dealt with, and I'm sure many of you have dealt with this as well. Please do not let this face you. If you are making a positive change in any form, I believe you can call yourself a leader, regardless of the title you may or may not have. In fact, I encourage you to disregard the idea of leadership titles altogether. If you wait until you're in a leadership position, then you're wasting your time. The title of leader doesn't magically give you leadership powers. Leaders are developed, not assigned. Please lead from where you are. You always have a voice. Speak up and hold those around you accountable for their actions. Hold yourself to high standards in whatever role you are in. Most importantly, don't feel like you need to be superhuman to be a leader. Congratulations, everyone. We've made it. Thank you for all you've contributed to the Boise State community over the past few years, and thank you for listening. Go Broncos!
Congratulations, Broncos. You did it. Whether you expected to be here or not, today is a big, big day for you. And I know that getting here wasn't easy. In fact, only 6.7% of people in the world have a college degree. So for that, you deserve some major recognition. And know that as you graduate from Boise State, we have some increased expectations of you. And some, we know that you can take on some added responsibility after you graduate. But I know that you're up for it. I saw many of you enter in your first year on campus, and I know that you've changed in some really meaningful ways. You've also changed Boise State. You've made it a better place for everyone here better for our whole community. So thank you for that. I know that you're going to continue to grow after you graduate and you'll make the world a better place as well. So today we celebrate you. And at the same time, I want you to take a moment today to think about all those in your life that made it possible for you to get here to this point. Take time to think about the teachers, parents, family members, friends, scholarship donors, everyone that was there for you along the way that helped you in your journey to graduation. None of us makes it this far without a little bit of help. So take time in your life today or sometime soon to say thank you to those individuals. And finally, once again, congratulations and go Broncos.